Good evening everyone, time for another silver update. This is the 8 hour chart of silver provided by netdania.com. You can click on the link below. As you can see we have a very large rally that started with the announcement of QE3 of more money printing by the Ben Bernanke and you can see here that silver and gold both took off now I did, I was not expecting that announcement at that time I wasn't sure what was going to happen or not but I was expecting this rally if you remember I pointed out that we could rally very quickly to 30 32 34 36 and then through 3750 this level I've been pointing out here is really a very key level and you can see that we're getting right at that level now uh, the reason why this is such a key level is because there is so little here that is resistance. We just ran up and failed. There's a little bit here. There's really not much there at all and not much there. So it's quite possible that we could actually rally this MACDs possibly turning up here for even more of an overbought condition. It's quite possible that we could run through this area real quick and test that 3750. And that brings me to one of my major concerns I was thinking about over the weekend and that is that it's quite possible that very soon the door could close rapidly and people could be left out and what I mean by that is when we go out and look at the daily we can see the uh, this steepness of this ascent of this run that we had we could see something that is even sharper than that and uh, it's quite possible that the door could close very rapidly and uh, we could see the market kite away. Now the reason why that concerns me is because after talking to friends and relatives and people that I know there's still just an enormous number of people who don't get it and uh, it would be really tragic if those people lost the opportunity to get in on this market but I have a feeling that that could actually happen fairly quickly and as you know human nature the, being the way it is uh, people tend to wait for a pullback and it's possible that there won't be a pullback I think uh, James Sinclair and others have predicted that we could actually run to 80 and 100 dollars really fast and that wouldn't surprise me at all certainly we should be above the $50 price right now if we go and look at gold in some of the other currencies we know that gold has actually rallied uh, near into into all-time highs or near all-time highs in the other currencies if we do an overlay here of silver and gold you can see that uh, silver still has quite a ways to go to catch up this is on the daily but if we go out to the weekly you can see that silver is still percentage wise quite a bit it's the equivalent of fourteen hundred dollar gold or gold is at the equivalent of forty four dollar silver so silver is still quite a bit behind the other thing that's really important is that we're just crossing into the positive line actually we need to just do the silver chart alone we're just crossing in at point two on the MACD and oftentimes crosses of that zero line can be very violent so we could rise very very rapidly from here and the door could close very quickly so I hope a lot of you were listening at the time when I was pointing out deals of stacking I pointed out a lot that I like down around the 26 level there was quite an opportunity to buy down around here and everybody who did is should be very happy with uh, what they got they're looking at uh, nearly an eight dollar even more profit on what they picked up just in the summer so let's go over to some of the questions of the night we'll run over those real quick this one's from George Silver and it's unlimited ability to keep the price of silver low dear brother John with the announcement that there will be unlimited QE won't this 
effectively mean that unlimited amounts of money will be available to keep the price of silver low. As you pointed out, the price of silver is governed by the comics, so JP Morg having unlimited amounts of cash could play bash silver all day long. Well, it's always been unlimited amounts of money. The question is not, do the banks or do the manipulators have unlimited amounts of money? Of course, the Fed has unlimited amounts of money. They control the printing press. And uh, as I'm going to show later, they're uh, the menace. They're the danger that's out there. But that's always been the case that they have unlimited amounts of money. The real question is, when will they hit a wall when the money can no longer control the physical? Because ultimately, it's going to be the physical, the amount of physical silver that... Uh, controls everything and we've been hearing from many people some on King World News and James Turk James Sinclair others pointing out that uh, things are getting very tight with the silver supply so if the supply itself gets tight then it doesn't matter how much money they have they can't suppress something that they don't have they can only suppress a paper price and that's going to lead to a disconnect uh, next question and that's on the silver bullet, silver shield. That's Chris Dwayne. And uh, this is from CM Cirillo. Hi, Brother John. Thanks again for all you do in educating us. What are your thoughts on the silver bullet, silver shield coin? Will you be buying any? Just curious on your comments. Thanks for your efforts. And there's a link here to the uh, silver bullet, silver shield coin. This is the first time I've seen this. You can see that uh, this is at Chris Dwayne's site. He's calling it a medallion. I'm not sure why he decided to do that. But uh, it's uh, one ounce, 999, and it says here AOCS approved. I'm not sure what that is. I, I assume that's uh, uh, one of the minting places. But uh, 299 above spot, that's pretty good. And uh, I think right now they're about $38. So. Uh, the design is kind of interesting. You can see that uh, in debt or death they trust. And uh, then we've got uh, listen to all, follow none. Silver bullet, silver shield, uh, a conscious solution to collectivist problems. So I think it's great. I applaud Chris Duane for what he's done. Uh, this is a guy who has put his money where his mouth is. Some Someone like Silver Doctors as well. Uh, this is going to be the... Uh, news and the movement going forward uh, I just can't say enough about what these people have done they they're the ones that get it they understand that silver is way underpriced uh, also Greg Manorino always bangs this drum and it's a drum I've been banging for years and uh, hopefully people have been listening because I believe that we're ready to make a gigantic move so I can't do anything but to offer uh, praise and kudos to Chris Duane for all his efforts. Uh, last question, Silver Community, and this is from the Muzzman. And he asks, while we wait for things to load here, Brother John, personally, your website and silver updates are by far my favorite. I really look forward to your updates, and your site is a great aggregate of quality blogs, sites, commentary, and posts from around the web. My question is, what other websites do you read? What do you follow? And what are the under the radar sites that you can recommend your followers check out? I'm a Trends Journal subscriber, Gerald Salente. I watch all of Max Kaiser's videos. I read Franklin Sanders, listen to KWN, and periodically check the blog. I watch everything of David Morgan, not a subscriber, seen Chris Dwayne's videos. Well, that's named quite a few of them. Uh, if you go to my blog, you can see on the right hand side there is a blog roll and this blog roll lists just about every site that I go to to get stories that I post on the blog. Uh, there are some other sites that I go to probably Godlike Productions which is a conspiracy site. If I want to see breaking news I check that first. I check Zero Hedge. I check Drudge Report. Uh, to see if there's breaking news. If you don't like Godlike Productions because it's rumored to be a Tavistock outfit and there's some buggy stuff that comes onto your computer. If you don't like that, you can go to Lunatic Outpost and that's kind of a copy of Godlike Productions. Doesn't have the volume, doesn't get the posts as frequently, but there is a lot of good stuff there. 
So those are some of the sites that I go to. I also check the forums, Kitco forum and uh, other forums as well, just trying to piece together news. So if you do have other sites that uh, have a lot of interesting content on them or fast breaking news, uh, send them to me and I'll go ahead and add them to the blog roll. Now, I wanted to get to the story of the night and that's going to be the QE3 and Ben Bernanke, who I think has pretty clearly, uh, with this, what he's done recently, has uh, clearly made it clear to everyone that uh, who he works for and what he's doing and that he's public enemy number one, in my opinion. Uh, he doesn't serve anybody but his banker buddies, and he's not helping anybody in the general population. He's only helping his banker buddies. Now, if you remember with QE3, he announced $40 billion a month of unlimited uh, MBS uh, purchases, which basically this is bailing out the banks. So you can see here, this is a chart of the CBO 10-year note interest rate. They hit a bottom of about 1.4, and now we're near 1.9. That's actually a 35% increase in interest rates since this bottom. But you can see since uh, Bernanke opened his mouth, we've got the uh, bonds crashing, interest rates rising. So uh, his announcement amounts to an unlimited bailout for bankrupt banks and a raising of the cost for you to buy a house. So uh, it's kind of like the worst of both worlds. Uh, I did a quick uh, calculation on the number of mortgages, and you can look these numbers up yourself. There's roughly 50 million mortgages in America with a balance of roughly 200,000 owed. Adds up to about 10 trillion. If we took that money, I'm not suggesting we do this, but I'm just using it to juxtapose what he did announce. If instead of giving that $50 billion to the banks, he would give that $50 billion every month to the mortgage owners, he'd be able to give $800 a month or uh, $10,000 a year to every single person that has a mortgage. They could reduce their mortgage by $10,000 a year at that rate. So it's very clear which side Bernanke is on and he's not on your side. Now I wanted to play a quick video from the Bears. I actually posted this to the blog. It's it's a big viral video. It's got over 5 million views. But I wanted to use the Bears to explain the insanity of uh, what Bernanke is doing and has done. And so you can see uh, whose side he is really on. We're going to play a little bit of this. So why do they call it the quantitative easing? Why don't they just call it the printing money? Because the printing money is the last refuge of failed economic empires and banana republics, and the Fed doesn't want to admit this is their only idea. So why do they want to print the money? Because they say we have the deflation, and the deflation is very bad. What is the deflation? The deflation is when prices of the things we buy go down. Isn't that good? Doesn't it mean the people can buy more of the stuff? Yes, but the Fed said this is bad, especially during the recession. So they think that during the recession, when the people have less money to buy the stuff, it is bad that the prices go down? Yes, the Fed would rather have the inflation. So why does the Fed think we have the deflation? Because the CPI said so. But aren't the food prices higher than a year ago? Yes. Aren't the gas prices higher than a year ago? Yes. Aren't the health care costs higher than a year ago? Yes. Aren't tuition prices higher than a year ago? Yes. Aren't the taxes higher than a year ago? Yes. Aren't the subway fares higher than a year ago? Yes. Aren't the stock prices higher than a year ago? Yes. Aren't the bond prices higher than a year ago? Yes. So what is deflating right now? The only thing deflating that I can see is the Fed's credibility. And I just want to play you one more thing that shows you the insanity of the Fed's policies in this little commentary. But he has a commentary. problem with this. Apparently not. Is this an episode of the Twilight Zone? I don't think so. Are you sure? Pretty sure. So what you are telling me is that the Fed thinks prices are going down when in fact they are going up? Yeah. And they think during the recession, with the high unemployment, it is better if the things people need to buy cost more money. 
correct according to the Ben Bernanke, the inflation will create the jobs and improve the housing market. Has this ever been tried before? Yes, just last year the Fed tried the quantitative easing with $2 trillion. Did that create the jobs? No. Did it help the housing market? Not at all. Did it help anybody at all? Yes, it helped the Goldman Sachs. How much of the money are they printing now? $600 billion. So even though the first $2 trillion did not create the jobs or improve the housing market, the Fed decided to do another $600 billion anyway? Yes. Who put the Ben Bernanke in charge? The Ben Bernanke was first appointed by, by the President Bush, then he was reappointed. So you can see that's actually a, a nice little summary of the insanity of Ben Bernanke, public enemy number one. He, everything he has done has been to help the bankers. Nothing he has done has been to help the people now with the uh in fact the questioning that happened uh after peter schiff pointed out the questioning after his speech uh, they asked him about the fairness of suppressing interest rates so low that savers and others are punished and bernanke's comment was that well implying basically they can invest in the stock market so this is a man who is only interested in bailing out bankers he has no interest whatsoever in helping the common people in fact one of the things that the cpi one of the reasons the cpi is always watched and if you remember in the 1970s the reason why they instituted wage and price controls was that wages were rising now in this environment that they've created because they've sterilized the money only available made it only available to the banks wages aren't rising they're actually falling so they're punishing workers they're punishing savers and they're bailing out bankrupt banks and uh, that's all they're doing and as the bears have pointed out uh, deflation is actually something that would be good for the people inflation is something that hurts the poor it hurts those who are on fixed incomes and it hurts workers who aren't getting wage increases on a regular basis anything like the amount of money that uh, prices are rising so Bernanke with his latest quantitative easing which again will be a failure has shown himself again to be public enemy number one he's only interested in bailing out his banker buddies he's not interested in helping the people and he will definitely go down in history as an abysmal failure and uh, someone who has done nothing but harm the American people now back to the main topic of silver and that is that the price is beginning to run away and I do have serious concerns that uh, if people don't get on the bandwagon now uh, they might not have another chance I know it's difficult to buy a rising market and fortunately a lot of us piled in down around 26 but uh, I think that for those who have been holding off and some of those who are waiting for a pullback you might not get that pullback you might just see the price kite away without you so it may be one of the last times in the next few months to stack underneath 50 and you probably just want to do your dollar averaging or whatever you can because uh, at some point the price is going to run away and I really don't think I'm not going to make any predictions but I really don't think that triple digits is that far away from us and we'll talk to you next time